Hey, this is Dustin Lynn. With Scotty. Scotty, I got you. You got me? Oh, yeah. What's up, man? What's How up, are brother? you? Doing just fine. Good. Who are you texting? Who are you tweeting? Oh, I was catching up. I was wondering if you were just setting your fantasy football team or what? <laughs> no, I, uh, man, I, I tried fantasy for a year and I was like, this is fun. It added a little bit of weight to, you know, the season and watching it, but gosh, damn, it took so much time. I, ne- I never did it. Cause I always thought about that too. And then my son decided he was like, I, I want to do this. I was like, okay, that'd be cool. It'd be a family thing. And, uh, and so we did it the last couple of years and then I got roped into like a radio league at the same time. And then I won them both last year. So I felt like I had to go back. I had to go jump in today. Cause you can't just walk out. Like, no, you can't, you can't walk after you win. Yeah. Man, good to see you, man. How you are too, you? brother. Doing great, man. It's been a great day so far. Good. I'm, I'm sure it's been a long day. Uh, let's jump right in the album, man, because one, congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you album. so much. How many songs did you write for this album? I've I've gotten a little bit more efficient with my writing, probably in the sixty-ish range, I would say. <laughs> it's because every song um, on the album is about a, a girl in some way. That's what makes <laughs> and, my world go round. Uh, were all of the songs, all sixty of the songs you written, about a girl, or were there ones that didn't make it? Because you're like, no, this is what this album is. Well, there's there's a couple that were probably about hunting, but um, uh, well, hunt, hunting a girl or hunt? Are you talking <laughs> hunting animals? <laughs> Yeah, no, probably probably deer hunting, I would guess. Well, I like the way you start this album, though, because you, you start in a very cinematic way. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you get slow, and it just feels so intentional that you're walking into this album in such a powerful way. That was the song that we kind of just took. We weren't worried about what the genre would think about the song, and, and we were kind of just... I wanted it to feel super masculine and, and almost industrial with um, how we approached the song, and I think that's why we got a lot of the sonics that we did on it. Um, it's a very emotional lyric and, and song, and, and honestly, the original demo was too. Um, but we just went for it and, and wanted to make it weird and exciting um, with, yeah, with some new, new, fresh sounds. So Yeah, because then you jump right into a super fun song, you know, Honky Dog Heartbreaker, and you're a guy that's known for a lot of fun, danceable, yep. danceable music. Who's the most fun person that in Nashville for you? Like of the co- the country music world, you got to go party with one person, and if oh, it's not wow. a band, the whole world ends. <laughs> Who are you picking to go? Golly, dude, that's I've never honestly I've never <laughs> thought about that question um, at this level. I would say on, probably because he's got the the nicest house around that I know of, and uh, can still party. And hang with me late at night. It'd probably be Luke Bryan's house. Okay, That's probably who I get to. But as far as your relationships, I'm sure you probably feel at this point, like every time you have to talk about it, you're probably at a uh, a Thanksgiving dinner with a really involved Mima going. When are you gonna get married? When are you gonna gonna ah. settle? Let's say you had to describe your love language which what's your love language for the girls that love the blue eyes out there my love language honest I, you know this is great i think i think it evolves and and it's part of the journey of finding you know your forever if that's out there for me um i love someone that motivates me you know i, mm-hmm. I think through the years like a, a girl that's that has a purpose and wakes up with a fire under them is is so attractive to me and i love affection i love i love someone that that sh- you know I guess more actionable affection that just goes a long ways. But I think through the years, yeah, it is. It is like um, I think if if I do ever settle down, it's going to be with somebody that's that has their own thing going, that's motivated, and has a fire for life. You know, that wakes up with the purpose of wanting to get better at something or achieve something else. I feel like I just watched you give the intro of a reality show, like The Bachelor. <laughs> what, you're, what you're looking for now? The girls are going to come from the other side. And I, I'm so and so. I have an affection for life. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Perfect. Bring it on, man. I'm, 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 all, I'm open to, uh, I'm open to meeting whoever, and and that's what's fun. Would man. you I'd, do a show like that? Would you do a reality? show? I get approached. I'll tell you about actually on my lunch break before this interview. Someone from our team was telling me about. Uh, getting approached by another reality show. Yeah, we get approached all the time by by different shows that are. Are they all dating shows? Uh, the majority of them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you don't want? Would you do it or no? I mean, if the I, right I show. don't want to say no, I don't want to say never because uh, I want to keep getting the option to say no. Um, <laughs> but yeah. it, it had to be the right thing. I just I'm not chasing any sort of fame like that. I'm I love writing songs and and playing concerts. I don't know if that's my bag, but right. I, I do love I do I do know I love making TV. I love hosting. I love everything that comes with television um, as far as producing yeah, it goes. The reality so. world's a different world. Once you go down that path, it's really hard to not be known as the reality TV country singer. Yeah, true. Right? 
I wouldn't mind seeing you and Jelly Roll do some sort of reality show together. That would be a lot of fun. That would be great. It'd be fun, right? I wish I was a little I wish I was a little bit shorter. We could do a Robin Biggs spinoff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He just wears you like a backpack around. It's yeah, fun. exactly. <laughs> so Jelly Roll, obviously, on Chevrolet. Yeah, I like the music video because it takes you back to what you've always been about. And that's kind of those roots of where you came from and and holding on to that while experiencing the journey ahead. But Je so Jelly Roll's not in the music video at all. No, he's not. So we had to get creative on how to get him in there. And um was it just a timing thing? It was a timing thing, but also it was it was he was in uh funny enough he was in discussions on on some uh brand collaborations that had an issue with Chevrolet. Mm. And so, you know, we wanted to be sensitive on on not taking that opportunity away from him and we yeah. worked around it by having um a, a Jelly Roll lifelong fan be our hero in the music video. So there's a lot of Easter eggs throughout the video that incorporate Jelly Roll and his career in, into uh, the video. So that kid in the video puts his headphones on in the bed, Jelly Roll, is is he a real lifelong fan or is that somebody he portrays? So I'm, um, that's someone he portrays, but his dad yeah. in the video is a lifelong fan. Really? Um, the dad that's working on the car that's a little bit ticked off that he's coming home. Um, it's it's a little bit of a broken household type of feeling. Um, that that guy in real life is a, is a Jelly Roll lifelong fan, and he was absolutely stoked to be on that set. Also disappointed Jelly Roll wasn't there, but also happy. Very to be bummed there. Jelly wasn't there. Yes. Right? Who's the girl voice on the song? Madeline Merlot. Canadian girl, Canadian, right? Canadian Madeline Merlot. Yes. You Love those Canadian collaborations. You got the Mackenzie Porter. Didn't you wrote some stuff for like Brett Kissel a while back too? Yeah, right? yeah, man. I I love. You know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if I settled down with a girl from Canada at some point. There but, is. Dustin but, Lynch wants a Canadian girl. There we go. Um, There's the headline. Yeah, both Mackenzie and Madeline are from up there, and um, two of my favorite vocalists in town. It's, they're unbelievable. I'd, if you get to sit in a room and without a microphone or anything and hear. Madeline Merlot saying it'll give you chills every single time. So honored to have her on that record. I, I can see us doing more music together in the future. Before we go, we always do a, a game called Good News, Bad News on the show. So I want to incorporate you right into the show today. All right. Uh, along with Chevrolet. So uh, what I'll do is I'll give you the good news of a story, and you're just going to try and guess what the bad news of this okay. weird news story is, Sweet. okay? So the good news of the story is that there's a woman who loves firefighters. And she found out that there's a place where all the firefighters go, and so she would always go there, and she'd shoot her shot. Good for her. What's the bad news of that story? The bad news is the place caught on fire. I don't know. What is the that's, bad news? That's kind of true. The, the place did caught on fire, catch on fire. The problem is she set the fire. So to get the firefighter, she started burning places. And this is a true story? This is an, a 100% true story. Incredible. It was wow. If this isn't a movie at some point. Yeah. She set a thousand different fires. Wow. Just to flirt with the firefighters. What a psychopath. I love it. Hopefully that's not the girl you're looking for, Dude, Dustin. that is crazy. That, I... I <laughs> I'm right in the middle of planting my farm right now, and a couple guys on on my um, road crew were talking about true crime podcasts, and they got me started on a new uh, podcast. And I'll tell you, it's amazing how involved you get listening to these things if they're done right. I mean, I'm looking over my shoulder on the tractor like, is somebody about to jump out and get me? It's so dumb. Yeah, my, my wife loves those too, and I'm like, this is you're either plotting my murder and you know now know how to get away with it, or... It's been years it. since I listened to one, and no kidding, like just walking around the block in the neighborhood now, I feel different about humanity after listening to a two hours of a crime podcast, man. I'm on my toes right now. All right, Dustin Lynch's next album is going to be very dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. No. no well, you I'm got killed to... the cowboy. No, next one's going to be how to get away with killing a cowboy. There you go. I appreciate you taking the time, man, and uh, enjoy it all. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. See you, bud.